What we've got is a teacher based in Cape Town, uh, Candice Rennie, who's been doing uh, developing content for our educational portal called To Enable, and she's running a live lesson uh, into this room with the students behind us. So what they're able to do, or what she does, is she releases an assessment in the morning, and they take the assessment, and she uses the, the results of that assessment to identify their weaknesses, and then she teaches to their weaknesses. Uh, what the learners behind us can do is they can interact with her using our platform sending messages. Uh, what we're finding happening there is we're getting a lot more interactivity with her because they're not having to put their hand up in class. So the children here are coming from different schools and they're a bit apprehensive to ask questions. So the fact that they are able to do it through an instant messaging uh, platform to somebody who's not here is making them a lot more comfortable and, and we're seeing there's a lot more interactivity. Today we are learning via the internet. Yeah, it's a show that is broadcasted. It's live. It's um, it's broadcasted by Candice from Cape Town. Yeah, she's the one who's teaching us, and um, she's teaching us math and physical sciences. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great thing, learning via online. Um, we're learning physical science as well as math. We're basically revising all the work that we did from term one up to term three. So they're helping us to tackle some questions and and then we could just learn more. So okay. the whole purpose behind this was that it's scalable. So we've got Candace in Cape Town and she can in fact run this lesson to 10,000 learners. So it's not that, so we can take a very good teacher and we can put her in touch with a large audience of learners and they don't have to be in a single venue. They can be spread around the country in multiple venues. They can be using their own devices. Um, and all of this is public, it's been run public at the moment and there is no cost to it. So the issue is at scale and it's putting a good teacher in touch with learners who want to learn. Now you've not seen Candice, have you? We haven't seen Candice. No. But yeah. you like working with her? We like working with her. Why is that? She, she's amazing. She listens to what we don't, we don't understand when we say. She doesn't like shout like some other teachers at our schools. And uh, just she, she also asks us what do we want to do? What do we want to learn? What we know and what we don't know? And um, she prepares some tests every uh, morning when we come here, then we write. Then she checked all the marks after we have written the test, then we focus on the lower marks that we got. You've come to know uh, this lady by the name of Candace, but you've not seen her. Yes. Yet yes. you've built up your relationship with her? Yes, we have. Yes. Through texting. We're just texting with her and then she's asking us questions and we reply whether we understand her or not and if we have any questions we also send her the messages. If I listen to the learners reaction, yes, most definitely. One of the most prominent things was that they actually interact more with the facilitator because they prefer sending typed messages to her instead of um, standing up in a class and asking a question. Why is it different? online than opposed um, to having somebody in the classroom. It's very interesting because uh, we like uh, it's using computers and we have we are any an experience. We are typing the messages then we send we ask all the things we want to ask. She's friendly and uh, she got all the um, requirements for a great teachers. Your experience? My experience uh, it's uh, been ama it's it's been a very amazing week to say. Uh, Candice is a very lovely lady. She's been teaching us a lot, uh, a lot. By this experience I've learned that uh, you need to revise some work in order to know stuff, not that learn and go through. Candice has been giving us revision since January. It's hard. I think for me it's hard to communicate like I'm saying you in English because it's not my mother tongue. So in texting, it's easier. So, and do you think this is going to improve your marks? Yes, that is going to definitely improve our marks because if we're not seeing her and then we can be able to text with her, most of us actually feel comfortable when texting instead of communicating with a person just face to face. So it becomes easier and then we can ask questions very easily because the first time that we came in, we weren't able to actually communicate and we were quiet. 
Mr. Matthews even said that we were quiet, but then when they told us that we can text her, it became even more easier and we were able to actually text the messages and then become helped and assisted. Looking at um, education as a whole in South Africa, nice what are your objectives uh, from to enable? So the whole idea was we started out as a music project working in rural locations and we recognised how important education is in these spaces and, and how difficult it is to deliver education to these spaces. So to enable was actually a program we developed around our music, our music pro project and we were delivering music questions and music resources into the space. And it turned out to be very successful. I can show you results that are taken on a daily basis of learners on our platform. So the next step up is now to use an interactivity space. So TV is, is really, it's not as good as, for instance, YouTube, where you can go and demand a, a video, because TV is just a series of videos that are, are linked. So we want a TV, but we want an interactivity component, which is the questions. So this classroom epitomizes what we're trying to do. We've got a group of learners interacting with a teacher and are successfully learning concepts which they're failing to learn in their classroom. Let's say this takes off. Where do you see yourself in a year from now? It's a difficult one to see this taking off. We've been running live lessons now for two or three months for grade 10, 11 and 12. Personally, at a learner level, I don't see a huge demand for education. They go to school and in going to school, they think they're getting an education. The value of the education only becomes relevant when they get to apply for university or they apply for a job. From a parental perspective, they think sending their children to a school is the equivalent of a, of a good education. They're almost outsourcing the futures of their children to a school, and if the school fails to deliver, it's not going to work. So I would love to say that there's a demand for it, but it's not, going to, it's not in the hands of the children. Very few outliers. For it to work in a government perspective, we need the government buy-in. Okay? And government buy-in is very difficult to come by because it is so cumbersome and slow and bureaucratic. And despite people within the government structure thinking that it's a great idea, the time it'll take to implement, I think we'll have probably moved on from where we are today.